Namo myo horenge kyo. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. I hope that this podcast finds you in good health and secure. The 3,000 realms in a single thought moment of life. We are going to cover the penultimate chapter, a very brief one, but one of the essential ones. Here's the thing. What is in in the briefest statement I can make, the 3,000 realms in a single thought moment. What, what is this concept? Nietzsche refers to it all the time. Tendai wrote many, many books, uh, par, you know, speeches and, and texts about it. Miao Lo annotated those texts. And Shakyamuni himself, in the lifespan chapter, described it to the best of his ability at the time for those people in that his day to get this idea and to put it succinctly for you and I in this time of 2023, I can say with a great confidence that the teaching of the 3,000 realms in a single thought moment of life is about the speed of causality. Great, Sylvain, you've given us more words to not understand and see what the heck you're talking about. All right. <laughs> so let's break it down. First, chant. Namu myo ho renge kyo. Please do that. Thank you. Now that you've opened your mind, I would like to suggest to you that if you're interested, you may not be, but if you're interested on how does this life work? How is it that I'm finding them myself? Why do I have these habits? How do I have these habits? What are these habits? How did I form them? Where did they come from? I can blame some on my mom and some on my dad and some, but I get, I run out of people to blame. At some point I'm like, but how can I know this? And at the same time, not know this. What the heck is going on? You ever had those kinds of thoughts? Maybe not those exact questions. But do you ever catch yourself, perhaps in a quiet moment, thinking, how in the hell did I get here? Why am I this way? Oh boy, there's a good one. And I'm not trying to get all smear me, smar me, but, you know, this... I, there's a misused word in in political discourse today about woke and wokeism. Hey, listen, somebody said that, that they they were expanding their perception of their life to include the possibility that other per persons in their environment experienced life maybe a little differently than their own. That's where this woke idea started from. There's nothing wrong with it. It's being used in a lot of bizarre ways. Am I lighting okay? I mean, is that better? It's a little better. A little bit more? Okay. Anyway, the point I'm making is our mind, which we think of as this repository of knowing, Notice I didn't say knowledge, but this, this soup of knowing. Where did that get its opinions? Why do I feel so incredibly strongly about this, but that, eh. And it's not about whether or not it affects you. It's whether or not you think it's important that it affects you, because everything affects you. And maybe you start going down this questioning and you get bored and you go, Blech, I don't even want to know. And you just, I'll just go chant. Cool. If that's all you need to drive you to go to your gohonzon, to use your butsudan and your mandala to focus your earthly samsaric attached mind to pierce into your buddhaness, you'll get there. You'll get there. No worries. 
But if you're anything like me, that little voice, or the voices, sorry, <laughs> the many voices in the back of my mind are like, yeah, but wouldn't you like to know? And those little voices create doubt, and they, they disempower me. And then I start going to my Butsudan, and uh, here it is again. You're still invoking your Buddha nature, but it's not very effective, is it? How can I motivate myself so that when I am presented with this mandala, this perfect mental earthly reflector to get to my Buddha-ness, and it Demand namo myoho renge kyo. Now, Buddha ness, now. I want it. I, need, I just want to be in it this moment. Namo myoho renge kyo. Invoke that law. Make it happen. That kind of demand, that kind of urgency, that kind of determination. Yeah. Nichiren says it just as Shakyamuni said it. Nichiren, Nichiren our teacher, says. That kind of conviction is enough to jar you into Buddhaness. Just the conviction alone. Because if you don't have that conviction, the other side of that story is you're just playing. You're not really committed. Something's holding you back. And maybe, just maybe, it's the wishy-washiness of how this moment comes to be moment this moment in time is this moment in time being 33 years of age is this moment in time being divorced is this moment in time being changing careers is it a low point is it a financial struggle point what is a moment in time right in samsara we think we tend to think of moments as this bracketed section of time. And it comes as kind of a surprise when we study Buddhism, when we find out moments are such a brief measure of time that they're, they're not conceivable. They're so minuscule. They're, they're more of a location than they are a thing, a point even. A point is a... A, a measurable thing. But when time increments become so small that the question becomes time? Yeah, that's that's a moment. That's a brief, brief moment. So now the point becomes much more clear. In that moment that we can't even measure, our mind has transmigrated, has moved through, has experienced, has made determinations based on tendencies and conditions of 3,000 different realms in that one moment. Not because there are more than 2,999 or less than 3,001 realms, the very fact that you can't measure that time period and there are these multiples upon multiples, that's the point. Not the number so much as the clear mathematics of conceiving of 10 realms and the 10 within each of the 10 realms in the three aspects of life in the thousand factors, the way that they manifest, all zigzagging and piercing and catching and bypassing one another in that speck of time? Holy crap, it's a wonder we can think at all. Or, more accurately, that we think we know what we think. <laughs> oh, here comes the jarring lesson. That 99.9% .9 of the time when we think we know what we're thinking, all of that thinking is based on 
an innumerable, unfathomable amount of inculcated decisions and choices that we're completely unaware of. So now when you ask, how the hell did I get here? Oh yeah, this process that I never pay attention to. I never even want to look that way because yikes, yeah? That's what the teaching of the 3,000 realms in a single thought moment of life is about. Why is that important? Just to confuse us? To make us feel totally out of control? No. The point of that teaching is to look at how we counteract it by invoking the very law, the process, the energy that manifests that we preempt it and then it becomes just a matter of observation experience not anchors and holding on to us i am a this and this and this and this and this ad nauseum i am experiencing this remember the video i did where i said instead of saying i am angry what if you could experience it as there is anger? What do I do with that anger? Not own it. That's the big shift. Yes? All right. That's the preface for an excerpt. Mind you, it's just a brief excerpt because this, this uh, teaching, this doctrine, this treatise that Nietzsche wrote very long. I did plenty of videos about it. You can do a search on the channel. Opening of the eyes. Hmm? And the excerpt that I put in here is this is part one. Yeah, that's all I put in here. The Lotus Sutra contains two important teachings. Just two. The Dharma Analysis Treasury, the Embellishment of the Truth, Precepts, Dharma characteristics, and the Tree Treatises School have never heard even so much as the name of these teachings. They only appear in the ultimate teachings of the Lotus. The Flower Garland and the True Word Schools, on the other hand, have sur surreptitiously stolen these doctrines and made them the heart of their own teachings. Well, the teachings didn't do that. Scholars 3, 000, or 2,000 years after Shakyamuni's passing understood that the teachings they were following, these earlier teachings, were incomplete. And when Tendai came up with this revolutionary way of understanding what was actually being taught in the Lotus, these other schools thought, wow, that's really good stuff. Let's say it's in our teachings too. Yeah, it's been here all along. We knew. That's called plagiarism or theft of the teachings, yeah? The doctrine of the 3,000 realms in a single thought moment of life is found in only one place. Hidden in the depths of the lifespan chapter of the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra. You see why I keep saying this is a central feature of Buddhism. Ichin and Sanzen, not an invention of Nichiren's. A very clear understanding of Nichiren's about something that several scholars before him had identified, annotated, expanded upon, and identified as the central, the most important insight the depth of it into why Myoho Renge Kyo works, how it works, why it's necessary. See, the, the 3,000 realms in a single thought moment, if you extrapolate it to a day, how many moments are in a day? How many realms have you been flying through in a span of a day? That, my friends, is what you've heard me call the karmic freight train. 
How can you possibly affect or influence that much energy in momentum that you can't even trace? Moment, 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 moment. Like that, it's just, you can't wrap your head around it. How can you intervene? How can you influence? How can you feel as a human being that you have any agency? Do you just fold up and go and wait? Okay, life's happening. What are you going to do to me next? Uh, what a pathetic life. I would argue that's not even a life. You're not the path. You're not the destination. You're barely the footprints. Buddhism is about reversing that trend, putting your mind ahead of in order to admire yourself within the process so that you can affect it, influence it to its most full, beautiful, expressive potential. That's, that's the foundation of what makes Myoho Rengekyo so incredibly powerful. They're not magic words. They're an invocation of the process that infuses the very marrow of that process with your agency. That's why Buddhism... Nargarjuna and Vasubandhu were aware of it. They knew it, not in those words, but they did not bring it forth into the light. Because how? How do you convince people of this thinking, of the way this engine of life works? Well, now we live at a time when energy and matter and influence, they're kind of everyday knowledge. We have the capacity. We don't need that much indoctrination to go, oh yeah, I get that. Makes positive thinking look like child's play. This is way beyond that, yeah? The doctrine of the 3,000 realms in a single thought moment of life begins with the concept of the mutual possession of the 10 worlds. Do you see? It's not about the numbers. It's about this multiplication of awareness, experience, understanding how much is happening in each single moment of this ever-expanding momentum that is the universe, which you are a part of integral, integ integrally. <laughs> I annotated here the ten worlds, also known as the ten realms, is one of the the factors calculated into the formulae of the three thousand realms, right? And you can look that up. You know it. You probably know it by heart by now. But do you see the significance of this teaching? It's not about memorizing the numbers or the multiplication tables or what the name of each realm is. No, it's about the conceiving in the mind of how our samsarically we're so out of control because we have no idea what's pushing us through life. In fact, it's not pushing us. We are driving through life with all of this energy, but we're not taking the wheel. We're just waiting for things to crash so we can then go, oh, okay, now I'll deal with this. It's not a way to live life fully. You want to live your life as a victim? Plenty do. It's kind of miserable. Sad, really. Our practice of Namu Myoho Rengekyo puts us squarely at the driver's seat. Panoramic view. Where we can then call up a, a map of our own lives and decide, not there, there. And if I don't like it there, I'll go there. We become in control of, and I don't mean control as pathetic control like the world of anger. I mean insight, relishing 
the beauty of all aspects of our coursing, right? Coursing as bodhisattvas in this life with Buddha mind, opening, illuminating, and leading the path, influencing our crookedy, whatever it was, wavy path from the past and nudging it. <sighs> and in so doing, influencing others to do the same. Because why wouldn't they? Namo Myorengekyo. Short one for today. But uh, a vital one, I think. A critical one for really understanding what is it that we're doing. 3,000 realms in a single thought moment is a very profound teaching. But don't make the mistake of thinking it's just multiplication la tables or labeling of different ways of thinking. It's the energy behind what drives all of life. This is what Nietzsche identified as core to the lifespan chapter of the Lotus Sutra. He wasn't the first to see that, but he never hesitates to hammer on it, trying to bring the other misled, polluted, corrupt teachers and elite around him to the, look, look, come on. This is the way to practice your life to the full. We call it Buddhism. Achieve your Buddha now. Why would you wait? Thank you for listening. Thank you for your practice. You are affecting your life and the world around you. Namo Myo Really, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because I guess all the good stuff's at the bottom of heart. I don't know, sayings. <laughs> oh, stay healthy, okay? There's a lot of uh, obstacles in the world. We should be able to navigate them without negative effect or influence. That requires a high life condition. That comes with the territory. Chant. Chant with conviction. You guys are awesome. Like, subscribe, help the Sangha. Download, uh, uh, purchase a, a, an ebook off the threefoldlowest.com website. Or buy a print book. Or use Patreon and PayPal if you just want to support the channel to keep us growing. But if all you can do right now is like and subscribe, please do that. It is a Bodhisattva act. Not for me, but for the Sangha. For propagation of this amazing teaching. Yeah. And for that courageous effort, you have my complete pride and admiration and gratefulness ness <laughs> all right i'll let you go next one will be the final chapter in this little book on the 10 modes of contemplation a guide to the tendai fourfold teaching it should be full of thought provoking statements can't wait. I'll see you there. All right? In the meantime, again, take care of your health. Thanks for being here. Bye for now. Thank you.
Thank you.